Good morning. So glad to have you with us again for another experience in the wonderful and awesome Word of God. I come to you on behalf of New Life Ministries Church in Plato, Missouri, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I share with you a word that I believe God has given me for the body of Christ so that you might be able to walk upright before the Lord and give him glory in your life and that you would magnify his name and that the light that he has placed in you would so, so, so shine before men and women everywhere that they will see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Before we go into the today's message, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today and we thank you for who you are. You are God all by yourself and there's none like you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise to your name, for you are worthy to be praised of all honor and all glory. For you created all things, and for your pleasure were those things created. Even us, we were created for your pleasure and to do your will. Now, Father, I ask that you would anoint these lips of clay that I would be an oracle of your will and of your word, that you might be glorified in all things that we would share today. And we ask this in the name of our dear Savior and our Lord, your beloved Son, in whom you are well pleased, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, as you can see by our uh, title today, the subject, Fruits of the Spirit or Antiques of the Flesh, which do we possess? Um, we'll be coming to you from Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to begin at the 19th verse. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now in the 14th chapter of Romans, Paul tells us that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, um, this tells us that, uh, that the works of the flesh is not conducive to the kingdom of God. Now, when he talks about this, they that do these things, this word here that's used here, this verb, uh, preso, or praso, uh, means to exercise, practice, to be busy with, to carry on, to undertake, to do, to accomplish, perform, commit, or and this is what jumps out at me, perpetuate, or, or actually, I'm sorry, perpetrate, uh, So it's something that is repeatedly done, something that is habitually done. It's done by habit. Now, John picks it up in uh, his first epistle, 1 John, when he says that they that whoever is born of the Spirit or born of, uh, of God does not commit sin because his seed remains in him. Now, I want you to hear that. Does not commit sin does not do, as Paul says, does not do these things. It doesn't, it don't habitually do these things. They don't perpetrate these things. Uh, 
Now we know in First John the second chapter he says, "My little children, if any man I, I I come to you to say sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ." So, what he is saying here, and he also says, if we uh, confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what he's saying here about uh, he that is born of God does not commit sin, does not mean that he's not able to 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 sin, but it means he is not a, a, a habitual committer of sin. Sin is not his lifestyle. It's not her lifestyle. As opposed to before we met Christ, it was our lifestyle. It was part of us. It was it was our nature to do these things. We had no other ability to say no. In Romans, the seventh chapter, Paul spells it out to us. What I want to do, I can't do. And what I don't want to do, that's what I'm doing. And it was to the, to the degree because he desired to do right. He desired to do what pleased God. But he had no power to do that. Because every time he would make up his mind to do, sin was present with him. That nature, that power of sin was with him to prevent him from doing what was right. Now, I'm not talking about uh, what we call good deeds and things like that. That's, that's all ceremonial. But I'm talking about what's inside the changing in the heart. He had no ability to change his heart without the assistance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why he goes down into the eighth chapter and says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, the works of the flesh, but after the spirit, the fruits of the spirit. So he doesn't work. He, they don't walk after the antiques of the flesh. They don't seek to continue the antiques of the flesh. And an antique is something that is uh, that gains its value or its classification from age, from time, how old it is. It has to be at least 100 years old. Uh, so the, the older it is, the greater it is as an antique. So when we look at the age of these works of the flesh, we go all the way back to the Garden of Eden when Adam fell in the garden. That's when the works of the flesh began. And God told him, said, you're going to labor from the, from the uh, sweat of your brow. You're going to labor now to produce and to, and to, so that you could, you could have bread. He says, and, and, and uh, uh, until you die out of the out of the ground, you were you were taken dust. You are and to dust you're going to return. And that's been happening. These antiques. We're talking about the antiques of the flesh. Your physical body, your natural body is an antique of the flesh and its actions. Paul talks about this. He says that in my flesh, there is no good thing. So those things, these things that he outlines here, these are the things that are produced or worked out or are made habits of our flesh. Okay, they're not fruit. And he says, they which do such things, those who have committed themselves to habitually doing these, or let me tell you this, promoting these things, selling these things to others. Look at this. And Paul talks about that in Romans, the first chapter, when he says they not only do these things, but they take pleasure in others doing these things. He said, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said this when he was talking about the uh, the Galileans who were um, killed in an uprising. It says, and Pilate mixed their blood with the sacrifices on the altar. And then he talks about the folk who died when the tower 
fell on them. And he said, uh, did all these things happen to them because they were sinners? He said, except you repent, you shall also likewise perish. Sometimes we look at things happening around us, the tragedies that happen around us, and we say, if there is a God, then how are these things happening? Why are these things happening? It's because of the works of the flesh. You simply don't blame God. Put the blame where it really is. Adam tried to blame God. The woman that you gave me, she took the fruit and gave it to me and I ate it. The woman that you gave, in other words, if she hadn't given me the fruit, I wouldn't have eaten it. But if you hadn't have made the woman, then she wouldn't have given me the fruit. So ultimately, God, is your fault. And that's what we do. We want to put it on God. We want to put the fault on God and say, well, if there's a God, then why is he allowing hurt? Why is he allowing suffering? Why is he allowing uh, disasters to happen? Instead of looking at the root cause of all these things, the root cause of all these things is sin. And we are committing those sins to keep it going. We keep the cycle going. Sin produces disaster. Sin produces death. Sin produces sickness. Sin produces uh, calamities. Sin produces sorrow. Sin produces murder. Sin produces anger. Sin produces hatred. All these things are a result of sin. And until sin is dealt with, you can pass all the laws you want to pass until sin is dealt with. People say, well, we need to get gun control. The only ones that's going to obey are the law-abiding citizens. That's all, those, those are the only ones that the law is actually going to apply to. And look, look don't, don't give me, don't come to me talking about you getting political. No, I'm dealing from, I'm dealing from the truth. And the truth is that laws cannot change the heart. You can't do it. You can legislate all you want to. You can come out with every law you want. But if I got hatred in my heart, those laws are not going to change what's in my heart and make me like you. If you got hatred in your heart, those laws are not going to make you like me. It has to be a change from the inside. And the only one that can change the heart is God. The writer of Hebrews tells us the word of God is quick and powerful. The words that's used there is the word of God is alive and active. It's a sharper than any two-edged sword, able to, to uh, divide between soul and spirit. In other words, the word of God is able to get inside of us and divide between soul and spirit. Divide our soul from that old spirit and bring in the new spirit to dwell in us, the spirit of Christ. If they won't hear the word of God, they're not going to hear the law. If they don't receive the preaching of the gospel and yield themselves to that, submit themselves to that, they're not going to yield themselves to the law, no matter what law you do, no matter how you enforce it. The criminals are going to get guns. The criminals are going to get knives. The criminals are going to commit murder. The criminals are going to commit theft. The criminals are going to commit raping and kidnapping and, and sex trafficking and drug overdose and drug selling and all of these things. The criminals are going to continue to do that. The corruption is still from the highest levels on down. The corruption will still be there because the heart is not changed because it's antiques of the flesh. This has always been going on because of the flesh. And the only thing that will fix it, the only thing that will rectify it is the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary. When that blood is applied to our sins, then we are cleansed from our sins. And we are made new in him. And it is through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are justified, made right according to the law of God. And we are made ad adoptive children into the kingdom of God, into the family of God. The precious blood of Jesus.
So we're talking about inheritance. A lot of people are quick to grab a hold of the antiques that their grandparents had and or great grandparents had and pass them on down. We call them heirlooms, family heirlooms. Well, sin is a family heirloom from Adam that has come down to us, to each and every one of us. Each and every human being that is born is born in sin. There's only been one exception after sin came into the world, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for us, the Lord Jesus Christ, because God was his father. He's kin to us through Mary, his mother. He had a human nature and a divine nature. And God was, as Paul says, in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself, bringing us back into the family through Jesus Christ. Not through Muhammad, not through Buddha, not through your pastor, not through your preacher, not through your bishop, not through me, not through you, but through Jesus Christ, his son. He reconciled the world to himself. But let's deal with fruit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. You don't have to. If you have, if you possess these, if you're producing these, you don't have to have a law. You don't have to, you don't need any law. The law is there to expose your sin. Without the law, Paul says in the seventh chapter of Romans, I would not have known sin. But it's through the law that I knew what sin was. Let's look at something else as far as fruit is concerned. The only way that fruit benefits the tree that it is plucked from is that it continues the lineage of the tree. In other words, you're able to make more trees from the fruit of that one particular tree. Let's say, let's have, have an apple. You take one apple from the branch of one tree. But then when you open, when you look at that apple, can you, by looking at it, determine how many trees are in that apple, that one apple? In other words, how many trees will, will come from the seeds that are in that one apple and from the seeds of the seeds of the apples that are produced by those trees that come from the seed of that apple, that one apple and on and on and on. Only God knows. So what am I saying? I'm saying this. If you notice something, Paul here in this letter to the to uh, the church in the Galatians, the area uh, of Galatia, is talking about the fruit of the Spirit. But look at this. In Corinthians, he talks about the gifts of the Spirit. So I'm challenging you, brother and sister Christian. Which do you want more, the fruit of the Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit? Too many of us are after the gifts and we're not producing any fruits. We, we want the gifts. We, we, we uh, what's the word that Paul uses? We uh, covet. We have a strong desire for the gifts. What about the fruits? the fruit of the Spirit. And look at this. When you look at the gifts of the Spirit, there's only one gift of the Spirit that's found here in the fruit of the Spirit, and that's love. I'm sorry, two. There are two. 
love, and faith. Faith and love are not only gifts, but they're fruits. And Paul talks about that when he says over in the 13th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians, he says, now abide these three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The most valuable of these is love. So what do you have? What are you producing in your garden, on your patch of land? In other words, in your body, in your work, in your ministry. What is, is God able to produce fruit in your ministry? Is he able to produce fruit that's going to bless others? Now, the fruit blesses the owner of the vineyard, the owner of the, of the grove, the owner of the, uh, of the property. The fruit blesses the owner. doesn't bless the tree that it grows on. It blesses the owner. The owner gets the profit. Paul tells us, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, that you are bought with a price, you are not your own. The psalmist over in Psalms 24 says, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the, the earth is the Lord's, the world, and they all that, the, and the fullness thereof, the world and all they, that dwell therein. They belong to God. You belong to God. Psalms 100 tells us, David says this, he says, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Before that, he says, we're not our own. We, we don't, uh, we, we didn't make ourselves. So what fruit are you bearing for God? It's not your fruit. It's his fruit. The gifts are not your gifts. They're the Holy Spirit's gifts. Are you using them for his glory, for the glory of God, for the glory of Christ? Or are you using them so that you can be arrogant and proud and show people how much you know and what you got and all? Wrong attitude. That's a work of the flesh. That's not a fruit of the Spirit. You're operating in the old nature, the antique nature. Not in the new nature of the fruit of the Spirit. Which are you? What do you want? Do you want the love, the joy, the peace, the forbearance? Do you have patience with folk around you? Do you put up with folk that, that actually you might not like? But because of the of, of Christ, because of wanting to please God, you put up with them, you endure them. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Do people want to be around you because of the, the attitude you have, the dis the uh, disposition that you uh, project? They just like hanging around you? Or are you, one, are you negative Nancy? I just made that up. You're always finding fault. You're always talking about the negative. And folk don't want to hang around you. They can't spend much time around you because you drain them. You have to take that inventory of yourself. I, I can't, I have to inventory me. Faithfulness. Can, can they count on you? Or do they just have to deal with you when they see you? But can they really count on you? Can they depend upon you? Are you faithful in what you do? Gentleness. Some people take pride in being hard, rough with people. I just tell it like it is. Give them a piece of my mind. The scripture tells us only a fool gives all of his mind. 
So you better hang on to whatever little bit you got. Peace of my mind. What about gentleness? Do you know how to handle folks? Husbands, do you deal with your wife as a weaker vessel? The more pressure, that word weaker doesn't mean as far as strength is concerned, but it means uh, the preciousness of it. Do you deal with her as if she's a jewel? Is she special to you? And self-control. Are you a glutton for everything? I know a lot of us like food. And I'm not talking about that. Even though that's wrong too. That's what a lot of our problems come from. Our health problems come from. Because we eat too much. We don't eat what we need. But we eat what we want. But self-control steps in and says, no, eat what you need. Get what you need. Work for what you need. Not just what you want. But when you're driven to try to get all you can get for yourself, then when you close your eyes for the last time here, where would all that go? You can't take it with you. These are the things that you need to Yield yourself to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, bear fruit in me, your fruit, not the fruit of the flesh, but the fruit of the spirit. Let your fruit blossom in me and produce more fruit to your glory, to your honor, to your praise. Let me be more gentle. Let me have more self-control. Let me be more faithful, dependable. Lord, let me be good to those that are around me. Let me be kind. Let's look at this and I'm going to close. This love that he talks about is agape love. That's the love that you can't produce. It has. It is a fruit of the Spirit. It's not something that you produce. It's something that God produces. I can't tell you how many times I've thought about people that I wanted to tell off. I didn't want to have anything to do with them anymore because of how they acted and what they were doing and what I saw. And then when they come to me and I have my opportunity to do it, can't do it because I see in them what God sees in them, a soul that needs Christ. So I can't do it because I don't want to hinder the work of the spirit in their hearts. So I say, yes, Lord, and I show them love, not mine, because mine is not sufficient to deal with it. But I yield to the love of God and let it flow. Let his love flow through me to them. I take a back seat. I let the fruit of the Spirit operate. Joy. This is gladness. The Greek word there is kara. It's kind of like charisma. In other words, joy is something that light brightens up your day. It just brings light into your day. The people can see that on you. You just walk into a room and your joy just kind of illuminates the whole environment. Peace. Now peace, some people equate peace with stagnation, something that's stagnant, something that's just, uh, there's no movement. It's just dead. Dead man is peaceful. He ain't fighting. But this is, this word here uh, means Tranquil, tranquility. It's a state of total tranqu tranquility. You're exempted from the uh, state of war and havoc. So when people come around you, they, they see peace. They don't see you in confusion and always stirring up stuff, stirring up mess. Long suffering. That's patience. Endurance. 
gentleness. It's kindness in a way of integrity. In other words, it's true kindness. It's not a fake kindness, but it's the right kind of kindness. See, integrity means to do the right thing regardless. In other words, regardless whether somebody sees you or somebody knows about it, you just do it right because it's right. Well, kindness, this kindness is, is showing it because it's right. It's something that needed to be done. You needed to show kindness. They needed kindness. Goodness. Now, this word, this Greek word is agathosune. Agathosune. Now, it's similar to this root word, agathe, just like agape. So, it's, it's an uprightness. It's a goodness. It's kind of. So, it means that it's something just like agape. God is the source. Same here. God is the source. Jesus said there is no one good but God. So it's something that God is the source of in your life. It's not your own goodness, but it's God's goodness. Then, of course, faith. Pistis. That's firm believing a conviction. Fidelity. It's something that you can you can depend on that has that you can trust. You can you can trust its its foundation. Something that you don't have to ever wonder about or worry about. You know that this is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's there. You know. You you it's it's constant. Meekness. Here's another gentleness. Mildness, kindness. It's a humility. True humility. Temperance. Self-control. Self-control. Someone that masters his devise, the desires and his passions. Against such there is no law. There is no constraint. There's nothing that that uh, sets a limit on it. But all these here, you can be as loving as you want to, as, have as much joy as you want to. Have as much peace as you want to. You can endure as much as you want to. Uh, be as gentle as you want to, or kind as you want to. Be as good as you need to be. Have as much faith as you want to be. And you can humble yourself without fear. And you can control your passions. There's no law against that. These others, the works of the flesh, the antiques, they're self-explanatory, pretty much. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and deal with it for your sake. Adultery. Everybody knows what that is. Have unlawful intercourse with another man, another's wife or husband. Fornication. We know what that is. That's illicit sexual intercourse. And don't start closing up your ears and stuff like that because you get that on TV. If you sit there and watch this junk and this mess on TV, you can hear the word of God describe it, what it really is, the truth about it. All of these comes under the homosexuality, lesbianism, uh, bestiality. That's with dealing with animals, uh, incest, 
um, adultery. Fornication covers a lot. But historically, it's any sexual intercourse outside of marriage. Uncleanness. This is in a moral sense. What's on your thoughts? Impure motives. Unclean thoughts. Impure thoughts. Lasciviousness. This is in direct opposition or contrast to self-control. You don't have any control. Whatever you feel like to, you do it. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. That's lasciviousness. Sprite had a, a uh, advertisement. Uh, obey your thirst. Satisfy your thirst. Idolatry, we know what that is. That's anything that you worship or hold in such an esteem of worship other than God. Witchcraft. Somebody, and I'm not talking about somebody with a wand running around and on a broom and everything, but it's, it's also dealing in drugs, illicit drugs, poisoning, sorcery, or sorcery, and magical arts. See, all this has come under witchcraft. So this, this word, pharmakia, that's the word that's used here. Drugs are used to change your mind, to change, to alter your way of thinking, to alter your uh, disposition. And it's mind-altering drugs. So it's, it's any illicit use of drugs. So drug abuse, that's witchcraft. Poisoning, it's witchcraft. Hatred, we know what that is. Variance, contention, strife, wrangling, always stirring up stuff. These are works of the flesh. It's antiques. It's been around for a long time. Uh, immolations. That's excitement of mind. Or are you stirring up? You go and, and, and stir up to try to manipulate manipulate people. You know what you're doing. You know what your motive is. You're going to tell them to do this so you can influence them to do something that you might be afraid. You, you, the old folks put it like this. They throw rocks and hide their hands. So you're telling somebody something about somebody because you don't want to be blamed. You put it into their minds and let them do the dirty work. Your hands are clean. You think, but your heart is not. Wrath. You know what that is? This is anger with a passion. This is anger that has no uh, control, has no uh, legitimacy. You ever run in folks that are mad all the time? They have no control. They go off at the drop of a hat. Wow. Seditions. Well, strife. Uh, strife is to, is what, I'm going to put it like this, what your mainstream media is doing right now is always stirring up something to divide folks. The word here that's used for, for this Greek word here actually is translated like electioneering. You, you're trying, it's a, it's a political deal, it's politics. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Right here in the word. You're always stirring up stuff. Seditions, which right follows 
this follows the uh, strife. Dividing people, divisions, heresies. A body of men following their own tenets, sect or party. In other words, heresies are those who their own opinions, rather than the truth of the word of God, they follow their own opinions, their own doctrines. Jesus said it this way. You have taken the traditions of men and by them made the word of God none effect. When your church doctrine, when your cultural beliefs, your cultural feelings, your emotions are more important than the truth of the word of God, you're, in a, you're a heretic. You're in, the, you're in the environment of heresy. Envians, y'all know what that is. You want what's not yours, but you want it at somebody else's expense. But you see somebody else has. Murders, you know about that, but it's more than just physical killing. Jesus also equates it with whoever uh, hates his brother without a cause. Uh, drunkenness, y'all know what that is. Revelings, you party animals. And such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not happening. You can, I don't care what church you belong to, your name is on their roll and whatever, but if you are uh, practicing these things, if these are your habits and this is what you're producing as opposed to the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit means that the, the spirit is the source of it. The antiques of the flesh or the works of the flesh means that you are the source of it. So if you're the source of all these things, don't put heaven in your view, because you're not going there. That's what the scriptures just told you. You're not going there. But if you want to go to heaven, then you got to renounce these works of the flesh, these antiques of the flesh. Give them up. Let them go. And yield yourself to the spirit and let him plant the seeds of the word of God in your life and bring fruit from that to his glory, to his honor, to his praise. And when you've done that, then you will be able to stand as a child of the king and be like him. And heaven is your home. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your word, the truth of your word. Thank you for cleansing us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, as we confess that we have not always done what is right in your sight and we have committed sins, but we ask forgiveness of those sins. And we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, for keeping your people, protecting them. Watch over our nation. Protect our nation, Lord. It's not the Army. It's not the Air Force. It's not the Navy. It's not the Marines. It's not the Coast Guard that protects our nation. It's not Border Patrol that protects our nation. But it's you, Lord. You are our true protector. And if you move your hand from protecting our nation, there's nothing to prevent our enemies from overwhelming us. So we put our hope, we put our trust in you, Father, and our faith is in you. Because we know that we can count on you. And there's nothing, there's no one that's greater than you, Father. We ask that you turn the hearts and the minds of the people to the truth of your word. All of us, Lord. And remove the divisions that's within us. So we may stand as one, as one people, as one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. That's the only way we're going to re realize that is in you, Father, and you alone. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Keep your people as the apple of your eye and protect them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Until we meet again, saints, go with God. <laughs>